If you have an Adobe account, you have access to something called Adobe Scan. This is an app on your phone that you can use to scan any drawings or any document and turn them into a PDF. So right now I'm scanning this demo drawing that I did. Um, the camera will take a scan of the image that you can then adjust uh, horizontally and vertically and you can also adjust the corners as well um, to make it actually square. You can scan multiple images to add to the document or just scan one, which is what I'm doing in this case. You can change the quality of the scan. So um, there's the original color, um, a grayscale or a whiteboard. Um, I think for this one, I'm going to end up scanning it as a whiteboard so I get the most intense um, contrast in line. The nice thing about this app is that you can save the PDF right to your phone and then it's in your Adobe account or you can send it to yourself or someone else, which is very useful when you're trying to turn a uh, physical drawing into a digital document. Once you have that PDF, we can use Photoshop to transform it into a .png file. So I've opened the PDF of these mugs into Photoshop, and I'm going to use the selection tool to select just one of these mugs. I'm going to copy and then use Command New to create a new document. When you do this um, and you have something in the clipboard, the new document that it creates is going to be the same size as your clipboard, which is very handy. And then I'll just paste this right into there. So I want to really kind of isolate these um, pencil lines. I'm going to make sure that the drawing is in grayscale and then add a new adjustment layer and go to curves. You could do multiple different things, but I like curves um, just because it's really easy to use. And what I'm looking to do here is really kind of just amplify the contrast between the background and the lines. By this point, you will have noticed that you have a couple different layers. I'm going to go ahead and combine my original drawing layer and my adjustment layer. Um, I'm just going to merge these so that I lock that adjustment in place. I'm also going to go ahead and maybe delete this other background layer. And now I'm going to go over to my quick selection tool, my magic wand, and I'm going to select all the white areas of the drawing. The magic wand is great for selecting things that are all the same color. And in this case, I'm going to delete it so that only what's left are the black lines. That gray in the background is kind of your indicator of a invisible background. Maybe from here I want to make some adjustments to my drawing like add some flats of color. So I'll select my paintbrush tool. You can change the type of paintbrush that you're using and also the opacity. I'm going to make this a little bit more transparent and you can select the color. I'll just select a nice blue. Now from here, I want to make sure that I am in the right mode. So I'm going to switch over to RGB color so that the color actually shows up when I start painting. And I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm just going to quickly lay down some color. You can see that this color is kind of laying on top of the things that I've drawn. Um, I'm going to also just change my brush size a little bit so I can get this handle in here. But because I have the color on a separate layer, I can move these layers around and push that color to the background. I'm happy with this, so I'm going to save this mug, um, title it obviously, and then I'm going to save it as a .png file. This will save the transparency of the background into the image. From here, from here, I could go ahead and add this image into, say, um, Google Drawing. And because it's a .png file, all those transparencies still follow through. So the only thing that's really showing up is the object that I've drawn and not the background, which is great for layering other objects into this composition.